the techniques of the previous video continue to work. If in addition to the trig function, you have some other stuff, maybe some multiplication or addition, maybe you have a square, something like this. So if you've just got a single trig function, our, our goal is going to be to get the trig function by itself and then solve using either what we did in the last video or what we're going to do in the third video. So we can add one to both sides. 2 times the sine squared of x equals 1. We can divide both sides by 2. And we can solve this carefully. A lot of students, even quite advanced students, will forget that this has two solutions, a positive square root and a negative square root. And this might baffle you a bit, but hopefully if we rewrite it, things will clarify themselves. We are rationalizing to go from here to here. We're multiplying top and bottom by the square root of two. And again, I hope you know some solutions to this already. In particular, the sine is the positive square root of 2 over 2. Here, if we use reference angles, we get 3 pi over four. And then it's going to be the negative square root of two over two. Again, I'm using reference angles here. This angle I'm just going to jot it down over here because uh, I'm running out of space and things are getting a little chaotic. The angle in the third quadrant that has pi over four as its reference angle is five pi over four. Sorry about the typo. And, um, The angle in the fourth quadrant that has pi over four as its reference angle is seven pi over four. So we get some solutions. In fact, we get four solutions, but as with the last video, there are really an infinite number because of periodicity. Three pi over four is a solution. 
So is 3 pi over 4 plus or minus 2 pi n. Uh, going to be listing these in a kind of wonky order. I don't know why I started with 3 pi over 4. And if we want to make sure we're not misunderstood, we can explicitly say that n is a natural number. So something that this example and something that the example from the last video had in common was that we wound up with a nice number here. I mean, the square root of two over two might not um, look so nice, but it's a number we've seen before. We can solve the sine of x is the square root of two over two mentally. So in the next video, we'll ask the natural question, what if we have an equation like this that we can't solve mentally?